everyone. Happy Sabbath. Uh, as we get started, why don't we have a word of prayer to, to get started with our, with our time together? Let's pray. Loving God, in this moment, as we uh, open up your word, as we study, um, I ask that you please be with us, Lord. We're not in the same room, but we are all connected to the same God. And I ask that as we open up your word today, that you may speak to us. Mm -hmm. And that the message that you have for us may, may go into our hearts and, and make us want to have a change for you. And it may transform our hearts, Lord. Bless us in the ministries that we have. We pray and we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I actually want to start off reading uh, a passage uh, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, starting in verse 7. It says, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig deep copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care, at least you forget the Lord your God, by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today. One thing I find interesting about the book of Deuteronomy is that we typically, we typically find a repetition of stories uh, that happened earlier in the time of Israel. Um, Moses continues to caution the people uh, because they forgot the things that God had done for them. So Moses time and time again in the book of Deuteronomy is reminding them of all that God has done for them in the past. And it, he, he goes as far as to start listing everything that God had done for them in the wilderness. Um, he tells them, when you ask for water, I give you water. When you ask for food, I give you food. He reminds them of the provision that he had. When we look back at their story, it wasn't just the provision that they had, but the protection that they had. They were on this journey for 40 years, and God was there with them day and night. Like They physically saw an expression of God there. Yet, time and time again, they seemed to forget what God had done for them. You know, for some of us, repetition is necessary because just like the people of Israel forgot back then of everything God had done over and over again, when we forget to, in the busyness of life and the complexities of our relationships with people, we tend to forget what God has done for us over and over and over again. Um, even in our context, we, we sometimes it's, it seems like we're just over it after listening and watching and experiencing something over and over again, we were just done with it. And sometimes we need someone to remind us, hey, remember what God did for you. Remember how God was there for you. Remember how you thought it was over. You, you felt like there was no way to get out of the situation that you were in, but God was there and he was faithful to you. See, what, what Moses is reminding them over and over again through the books that he writes is that even though they were not faithful, God remained faithful. Even though they kept on forgetting and going to try to uh, worship other gods and make idols out of the gold that they had, right? And they strayed from the path, God was still faithful to them over and over and over again. And I wonder how many of us are guilty of not being faithful to God. And I wonder how many of us have experienced God being faithful to us, even when we haven't been faithful. You know, God has brought you peace in a time of need, and you have forgotten. God has provided for you in a time of need, and you have forgotten. And Sometimes it's important to go back and see how throughout the history of our lives, 
God has been there and, and his hand has been moving in our lives. The story continues in verse 12. It says, lest you, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your heart and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, and then your heart will be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the, uh, out of the flinty rock. Beware, at least you say in your heart, my power and my might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get well, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Moses continues to remind them through this, these last few verses of what God has done for them. And he focuses on God as a source of the blessings that they had both in the past and the blessings that they were going to have in the future. Uh, Moses calls their attention to the need to base everything we have on that covenant relationship between God and his creation. In other words, what he's telling them is that God had chosen them. And because God had chosen them, they were promised that God was going to bring them victories. And he reminds them, he already brought you victories. And because he made a covenant for you, you're going to have victories in the future as well. Moses was, was reminding them also that the success that they had, that the success they enjoyed was the confirmation of God's covenant for them. That God was giving them all the victories that they had. And I wonder how many of us go through life accomplishing one thing and then another and then another and think to ourselves, I did that. It was because of my power. It was because of my strength. It was because I am so smart and I'm so intelligent and I'm so dedicated and I put in the hard work. I wonder how many of us are sitting here thinking that we got to where we are, that we have the status that we have, that we have the title that we have because of something that we did. But when you think about it, it's God who is working in our lives without us even noting, without, without us even noticing. He was opening doors that we didn't even know existed. He was closing doors that would harm us. He, he was providing a path for us to get to where we're at. And yet sometimes we forget and we think, I got there, I did this, it's on my own string. They were going through that. They were experiencing that. He was warning them, don't go and think that you did everything on your own strength. Remember that it was God who was there for you. It was God who took you out of Egypt. It was God who fed you. It was God who protected you. It was God who is giving you this new promised land. And it is God who's going to continue to provide for you. They had been slaves in Egypt, and now they had gone through years of experiencing a hard time. Because being in the wilderness and walking for 40 years was not easy. And I wonder how many of us live our lives thinking that what we had before God brought us to the place we're at now was better than where we're at now. Because the people of Israel were complaining to God throughout their journey. Why couldn't you just leave us in Egypt? We were better off in Egypt. But God was working out a plan in their lives. He had chosen them. He had called them his people. And he was going to protect them and provide for them. And that's the same promise that he has for you and for me today. See, he doesn't promise us that we're going to have it easy in this life. But what he does promise is that he's going to be there with us throughout this journey, throughout our life, as we face the challenges, as we face the obstacles, as we chase, the, as we face the difficult times, God promises to be with us 
every second of the way. So I want you to think about this with me for a second. Moses was trying to get them to understand that God's past blessings flowed out of obedience and faithfulness to God. And that gives us hope for the future because we know that the God who brought victory then will continue to bring victories now. The God who was with them in that journey is the God who is with us in our journey. The God who provided for them in their journey is the God who provides for us in our journey. You guys are here because you guys are leaders. You guys have been entrusted and you have been called to a specific ministry in your church. And that journey of being a leader is going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. You're going to find different obstacles, different challenges, different things that come up that just overwhelm you to the point that you're going to want to quit. But I want to challenge you today to trust in the God who brought you victory yesterday to bring you victory tomorrow. To trust in the God who provided for you yesterday to provide for you tomorrow. So as you lead in your local church, as you go and be faithful to the calling that God has made in your life, even if you fail, even if you don't get things right the right the, the first time, even if you have to redo something over and over again, remember that we believe in a God who is faithful to us, even when we are not faithful to him. So remember that your journey is not over. Remember that your victories are God's victories. And remember that the God who brought you victories then will bring you victories one more time. So trust in his love. Trust in his power. Trust in his amazing compassion that he has for you and for me. Trust in Jesus. Let's pray. Loving God. Some of us are sitting here and maybe we have forgotten what you've done for us in the past. Maybe we don't remember that when we started off as leaders for our pathfinders, we only had two kids and now we have 20. Maybe we've forgotten that when we first started, we didn't even have a budget, but somehow you made it work and now we have a, a successful club. Maybe some of us are sitting here not remembering that in our personal lives, we were in a bad place, but you brought us out of that and you have us here now. Lord, as humans, we tend to forget all the time and not just about what you've done, but everything. And Lord, today, I want this to be a reminder to all of us who are sitting here in this meeting that you have been faithful to us throughout history. And you were faithful to your people in the Bible, that you're faithful to us now, and that you will continue to be faithful to us in the future. So we surrender ourselves to you. We surrender our ministries to you. And we ask that you continue to keep your promises to us. That you continue to be faithful to us. Thank you, Lord for your blessings, for your love, and for always being there for us. We pray and we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.